Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar, Optimizing Tumor Study Performance, Evaluating the BNDG and NSG Models in PDX and CDX Tumor Studies. I am Kaylee Bach of LabRoots and I will be your moderator for today's event. Today's educational web seminar is presented by LabRoots and brought to you by Invigo. To learn more, please visit Invigo.com. We encourage you to participate today by submitting as many questions you may have during the presentation. To do so, simply type them into the Ask a Question box and click Send. We'll answer as many questions as we have time for at the end of the presentation. You may also submit any technical issues here as well if you have trouble seeing or hearing the presentation. This webinar is educational and thus offers free continuing education credits. Please click on the Continuing Education window at the bottom of your screen to obtain your credits. I'd now like to welcome our speaker, Dr. Victoria Hidmark, Senior Scientist at Invigo. Victoria, you may now begin your presentation. Thank you so much for that introduction and thank you for, to everybody online who has joined in today. Uh, as mentioned, I will be presenting on optimizing tumor study performance, evaluating the BDNG and NSG models in PDX and tumor studies. So an overview of today's presentation, I will start with going over um, an overview of how the BNDG model was created and some of its characteristics. Then we will look at some humanization data utilizing uh, PBMCs and HSCs um, in the BNDG model. And then for the meat of the presentation, we'll look at uh, how the BNDG model performs in supporting uh, the growth of tumor cell lines, um, as well as patient-derived xenografts, and how um, the growth rate compares between uh, the BNDG model and the NSG model. Uh, but starting out with the model creation is and uh, some characteristics. So the BNDG model, or uh, the NOD, CB17, PARA-KDC, SCID, IL-2R, Gamma, TM1, BCGN, HSD model was created by Biocytogen uh, through the leading the IL-2R, Gamma, or common gamma chain gene uh, in the non-CB17 SCID mouse. And this model has subsequently been uh, licensed by Invigo. So the non-CB17 SCID mice uh, already had the pair KDC null mutation, uh, which is characterized by uh, these mice having a deficiency in functional T and B cells. And the addition, uh, the deletion of the IL-2R gamma uh, results in a further immunodeficiency um, due to a lack of functional receptors for a wide array of cytokines, uh, for example, IL-15, uh, which is essential for the development of functional NK cells. So the way the IL-2R gamma gene was deleted in the BNDG model was through uh, CRISPR-Cas9 technology, uh, utilizing CRISPR-Cas9 uh, technology, and the entire coding region, so exons 1 through 8, uh, were all deleted, and there was no uh, backcrossing uh, needed uh, to generate the model. So this is different from uh, other models such as the NSG model where uh, the il 2 gamma delete, um, gene deletion was generated and then had to be backcrossed uh, onto the model. So carrying on with some of the features of the BNDG model, uh, we have looked at its growth in both male and female, uh, utilizing both males and females. And this was a study that was carried out uh, in-house uh, in one of our production facilities in France. And so 30 males and 30 females were utilized for this study and their weights were measured over a time period of 10 weeks. Um, and as you can see here, at six weeks, the average weight of one of these um, VNG females is uh, about 19.9 grams, which is slightly smaller um, than what's been seen in the NSGs where the average weight of this age is about 21.1 grams. So not a big difference, but something that could possibly um, reduce the cost of compounds um, in long efficacy studies where uh, the mice are uh, dosed daily based on their body weight. 
Um, so I, as I mentioned, this model is um, triple immunodeficient, adding to uh, the models that are um, on the market um, displaying this phenotype. Um, and this has been shown to enhance tumor cell engraftment, and we will look at uh, some, of, some of this data later on in the presentation as well. So a triple immunodeficiency, that means it has um, no T cells, no B cells, and as I mentioned, these uh, mice are also deficient in, in AK cells. Um, this model also so decreased leakiness as the animal's ages compared to other SCID models. And as it was generated on the NOD background, uh, it does have the NOD serp alpha polymorphism, which has been um, shown to uh, facilitate uh, engraftment with both PBMCs and uh, HSCs. So, um, biocytogen uh, performed some of these humanization uh, experiments uh, utilizing the BNDG mice, and uh, they did this using both uh, human uh, peripheral blood mononuclear cells and hematopoietic stem cells. Uh, so, here we see uh, some data from um, the study done utilizing PBMCs. And so for this study, um, there was three mice uh, utilized that were injected with um, 5 million uh, PBMCs into their caudal veins, and then 26 days, or sorry, 24 days after the injection, uh, they looked at how uh, many uh, mouse uh, CD45 positive cells were uh, present compared to how many uh, human CD45 positive cells. And as you can see here, the, the frequency of human CD5 positive cells ranged from 36, about 36% up to 73%. Taking a closer look at this um, uh, human CD45 positive cell in particular, and then um, gating, uh, utilizing uh, CD19 and CD3, so B cell, and T cell markers, you can see that um, essentially all of these human CD45 uh, positive cells are also positive for CD3. As mentioned, they also did humanization um, studies utilizing CD33 positive uh, HSCs. And so for these studies, uh, the BNDG mice were injected IV with 100,000 of these human hematopoietic stem cells after uh, radiation. And then they tracked the frequency of these human CD5 positive cells uh, over time. And that is what we can see here on the left, on the left-hand side. So after uh, two weeks after injection, uh, the percentage of uh, human CD45 positive cells is less than 20%, uh, but after eight weeks, um, at least 70% of the mice have more um, than 80% uh, human CD45 positive cells. Taking uh, a closer look at what cell populations are represented within this uh, CD45 positive or human CD45 positive cell population, uh, they further show that 49% are T cells, um, about 25% are B cells, and the NK cells uh, make up about 2% of this population. So together, these two studies demonstrate that the BNDG uh, mice can be humanized utilizing both uh, PBMC and HSCs, and that it thus can provide a very valuable tool uh, for um, immuno-oncology research. But naturally, in order to be able to do immune oncology research, the, mod, the mouse model also has to support the growth of tumors. So that is um, what we will focus on uh, for the remainder of the presentation. And we will start looking at how um, the BNDG model can be used as a tool uh, for CDX studies. Um, so it's been shown that the BNDG model supports engraftments of a wide array of tumor lines, and it has uh, so far been referenced in nearly 20 uh, peer-reviewed studies. And these studies include uh, cell lines derived from cancers of different tissues, uh, and for a total of 21 different cell lines. Um, so 
Uh, you can see in this table right here that these vary from blood cancers to epithelial cancers uh, to brain cancers. Looking closer at a data set generated um, by one of our uh, collaborator, collaborators, Crown Bio, they uh, compared the growth of the leukemia cell line, Kasumi-1, um, between BNDGs and NSG mice. So here, 10 animals were used uh, per group, and 10 million cells uh, were injected per mouse. And for this particular cell line, um, there was a faster tumor growth uh, in the BNDG mouse compared to the NSG mice, with the endpoint reached about 9 to 10 days sooner in the BNDG compared to the NSG. Another collaborator, uh, Sinopat, uh, which was based in Spain, um, utilized a non-small cell lung cancer uh, cell line for a CDX study. And uh, for this, they compared the growth in uh, BNDG mice versus the athymic nude mice. And as you can see here in the red, uh, the BNDG supported the growth of this cell line very well. Uh, whereas it grew much slower in the less immunodeficient athymic nude mice. So these data demonstrate that the BN BNDG indeed can be a very valuable tool for uh, carrying out CDX studies, in particular um, for cell lines that um, have a very slow growth or that does not grow in the less immunodeficient uh, models. Another area that, that we know um, these ultra-immunodeficient models generally perform better or, uh, phrasing it differently, are known to support faster uh, tumor growth uh, and also the engraftment of more uh, models is for the patient-derived xenograft studies. So for uh, those of you who are not familiar uh, with this term terminology, whereas a uh, CDX or a cell, cell line derived xenograft is um, generated from a tumor cell line. Uh, these, P, uh, which have been grown, uh, which can or have been grown in culture. A PDX model is generated um, by grafting a patient tumor sample and then uh, putting this straight into a mouse model and never growing these um, uh, tumor cells uh, in vitro. And this has been shown to better demonstrate uh, or better recapitulate uh, the intertumoral heterogeneity that is seen um, in patient tumors. Uh, but it is also known that these types of tumor models uh, tend to be harder to grow um, in mouse models compared to a lot of the cell line based models. So, we wanted to look at how the BNDG model supported these as well. So Biocygen had um, has generated some da um, some of these models in the BNDG. In fact, they have been able to engraft 173 different PDX models uh, in the BNDG mouse, uh, and these are from cancers arising from various tissues. Um, and you can see the breakdown um, in this figure, where the majority was from gastric cancer, but there was also lung, pancreatic, bl blood, breast, colorectal, and esophageal cancers. There has also been uh, literature published where the BNDG mouse has been utilized in order to grow these um, PDX um, models. Uh, in the table here, you see uh, three different examples um, where there is a pub, um, study published utilizing a small, small cell lung cancer PDX, colorectal cancer PDX, as well as an intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma PDX model. But we also wanted to uh, perform some of these studies in-house and also compare how our ultra-immunodeficient BNDG model compared to that of the um, NSG mouse. So to do this, we utilized four different uh, PDX models uh, from two different collections that are licensed by Envigo. So we utilized three different breast cancer PDX models from the Washington Uver University Human in Mouse, or WIM, breast cancer PD 
uh, PDX collection. So this is a collection of over 100 models where um, the, the patient clinical outcome, therapeutic history, and responsiveness to treatment is documented. And for some of these models, we also have additional characterization data available that we are um, happy to share in order for uh, our clients to be able to um, pick the ideal models um, and to generate um, the data that they need. So we have uh, exome and whole genome sequencing, uh, reverse phase protein array, RNA-seq, nan nanostring data, standard of care efficacy study data, growth rate data, and gene expression data available um, for some of our for some of these PDX models. We also utilized one uh, melanoma PDX model, which is a part of the Wistar uh, melanoma PDX model collection. And Envigo has licensed about 150 of these models, which are available through the Wistar Institute. And we have seven of these models readily available as studies and distribution at Envigo. So these models include BRAF uh, resistant models, which is obviously a very uh, important tool in order to develop new therapies um, for patients that carry BRAF resistant tumors. Um, we also have some characterization data uh, available for these models, such as the primary tumor type, uh, what targeted therapy uh, this tumor saw prior um, to the grafting of the sample to generate the PDX, as well as if um, they received any immune therapy, and if so, which one uh, prior to biopsy. We also know the age and gender, the biopsy site, site and the stage of the tumor. And, and some limited inf uh, mutation information. So the outline of these studies were that female mice were implanted subcutaneously with a single uh, cell suspension of uh, the PDX, so, so WIM5, WIM20, WIM3, which, is, uh, which are the breast cancer um, PDX models utilized, or WM4071-2, which is the melanoma PDX model utilized. Um, at 1.5 million cells per mouse, uh, the cells were mixed uh, in one one with PBS uh, and Matrigel, and the total injection volume was 100 microliter per mouse. So for the uh, duration of the study, these house mice were housed in innovative individual vented cages and consumed Teclad global rodent diet 2919. And uh, these tumors were measured using the biopticon tumor imager, and uh, volumes were calculating using the corresponding tumor uh, manager software. So in the subsequent uh, um, graphs I will show you, um, I just want to let you know that for the mean tumor volume graphs, once a tumor reached the 200 millimeter cube size, the mouse was removed from the study, and so that uh, data is no longer plotted. So the first PDX model we utilized uh, is called WIM5, and that is a triple negative breast cancer model that was derived from a brain metastasis of a very aggressive tumor. It is P53 mutant, and for this particular model, uh, the whole uh, genome sequence data has been published, and um, we'll be happy to provide that for clients that are interested. Uh, for model um, selection purposes. There's also RNA-seq data and gene expression data um, in addition to the clinical data. So looking at the results from this study, uh, at the top you see spider plots. So this is where each individual line represents the tumor growth on one mouse. And uh, the graph on the bottom is then instead shows the mean uh, tumor volume for the entire group. And as you can clearly see in particular in the bottom graph, uh, this PDX model grew with the same rate in the NSG and BNDG mouse mice, but it uh, grew much slower in the less uh, immunodeficient athymic nude mouse. The second PDX model that we tested was the WIM20 model, again, from the um, 
Loom Collection from Washington University. And this is an ER and PR positive model um, that is HER2 negative. It is derived from uh, skin metastases and it has been shown to have the Y537S uh, ESR1 mutation. And it is also a uh, has mutation for P53 and PIK3CA. Uh, as for WIM5, we have whole genome sequence data, RNA-seq data, uh, and gene expression data available in addition to the clinical data. So looking at how uh, this tumor grew um, in the ultra-immunodeficient compared uh, to each other, as well as to the athymic nude mouse, uh, as you can see, the overall growth rate in all models was uh, much slower than the WIM and uh, the triple negative uh, WIM5 model. But again, we see that there is no uh, statistical difference in the growth rate of these of this um, PDX model in the NSG mice compared to the BNDG mice. But that again, um, this PDX model uh, grows slower. Uh, in the less immunodeficient athymic nude mouse model. So the final um, breast cancer PDX model we tested was uh, WIM43. So this is an ER positive, PR positive and HER2 positive uh, tumor derived from the right, from a right rib metastasis. It carries the D538G ESR1 mutation uh, but it's wild type for both P53 and P3CA. Uh, for this model, we do have exome sequencing data in addition to RNA-seq and gene expression data um, and the clinical outcome data. So with the risk of sounding repetitive, we saw the same pattern um, for this the PDX model where um, the tumors grew with similar rates in both the NSGs and the BNDGs, but where they grew uh, much slower in the less immunodeficient um, athymic nude mouse. So moving into the final tumor model uh, that we tested, which uh, to remind you, I was the melanoma model, so the WM4071-2 model. This is the BRAF resistant model, uh, which has the V600K um, mutation, and it is derived from a brain metastasis. And the patient from which this was derived was treated with vemurafenib prior to sample collection. So as we saw for all the three um, breast cancer PDX models we tested, uh, this melanoma model grew um, with similar rates in both the BNDG as well as the ND ND NSG mice. However, clearly different was how these, um, this PDX model performed in the uh, nude mice. As you can see here, uh, essentially all the three groups um, show similar uh, tumor growth uh, with this PDX models, whereas in the breast cancer PDX, uh, we tested the ultra immunodeficient um, mouse models, both uh, supported much faster growth. Um, so together we can take this data and say that you know, depending on what model uh, you're utilizing, uh, these ultra immunodeficient mice can really shorten uh, your study time. Um, but depending on uh, what model you're using or what, what compound you're using um, and how long uh, that compound needs to be, um, be utilized for treatment in order to see an effect, you know, different models, uh, different mouse models will um, be able to uh, support different types of studies. Um, so, as I mentioned, we are very excited to be able to add the BNDG model into the repertoire of immunodeficient mouse models that we um, 
can provide for our clients and that they can uh, purchase in order to utilize for their uh, tumor studies. But um, we can also offer uh, services to perform uh, efficacy studies in-house at Invigo. And um, we are happy to perform these uh, studies in the mouse model uh, of your choice. Um, but again, we're excited to be able to uh, add the BNDG model to um, as an option. So in general, um, in order to get um, uh, be able to get uh, statistical differences between the groups, we um, like to have at least eight to ten mice per group, and uh, we do implant fifty percent more mice with tumor cells than we know we will be needing to enroll for a study. And this is just to ensure that we have a sufficient amount of mice with tumors within the correct uh, size requirements in order to be able to uh, en enroll uh, all mice um, at a single enrollment event. Uh, so for these studies, again, uh, we, as we did for the um, PDX studies, uh, I just showed you some data from, we do a single cell, um, an implantation of single cell suspension uh, sub Q on the right flank, and uh, we perform STR analysis both prior to implantation as well as at the end of the study uh, to confirm uh, the model. We can offer IV, IP, oral, and sub Q dosing of a single compound as well as combination group, as well as compound formulation services. And um, these, um, as for the PDX uh, studies I showed you the data from, we measure these tumors using the tumor imager and corresponding tumor ma um, manager software um, and provide weekly updates to our clients so that any uh, needed adjustment can be, uh, be done quickly. We also can provide end of study body samples and tumor tissue, so uh, you know, allowing um, the clients to extrapolate as much information as possible uh, from each study and from each individual animal. And we'll also provide a final stutter report uh, complete with um, all the dose vo volumes and weights uh, together with the tumor volumes throughout the entirety of the study. Uh, we can also offer tolerability studies that can be performed in mice uh, with or without uh, tumors, and uh, as well as PKPD studies. Where um, these can often be performed in those extra mice that were implanted, but that did, was not enrolled in an efficacy study um, uh, to reduce price. Um, and, you know, we uh, pride ourselves in excellent customer service and flexibility. We really want to work with our clients um, to pick the best tumor model, the best mouse model, and the best study design uh, for their um, study goal. Um, so in conclusion, uh, the BNDG model was developed by Biocytogen using CRISPR-Cas9 uh, technology. And this um, new ultra-immunocompromised mouse model um, is a great addition to the field of oncology research, in particular for the harder to grow um, or slower growing uh, cell lines and uh, patient-derived xenograft models. Um, I've further shown that the BNDG model uh, can be humanized, utilizing both um, PBMCs as well as HSCs, um, and that they can, that these mice can support the growth of a wide array of tumor cell lines as well as PDX models. And that um, for, uh, for the models that we looked at, they do so with very similar kinetics to that of the NSG mouse. And then as I mentioned, um, if you're carrying out these long efficacy studies with daily dosing based on body weight, the slightly smaller size of the BNDG model can help reduce cost um, um, based on compound and feed. Um, and then finally, we at Invigo have the capability to support 
um, to run efficacy studies uh, in the BNDG model or in other mouse models uh, of your choice. So that uh, concludes my presentation. I'll be happy to have uh, happy to take any questions that um, have come in during the presentation. And if anyone watches this uh, after the fact or have questions come up uh, after the presentation, uh, please go ahead and email marketing at nvigo.com and we will be happy to uh, answer your questions. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Victoria, for your informative presentation. We will now start the live Q&A portion of the webinar. If you have a question you'd like to ask, please do so now. Just click on the Ask a Question box located on the far left of your screen. We'll answer as many of your questions as we have time for. All right, let's get started. Our first question asks, can I obtain a license to breed BNDGs at my animal facility? Yes, that is a great question. Thank you so much. Uh, so the answer to that is no, we cannot uh, provide breeding licenses for uh, this model for someone to breed them at their facility. However, if you know that you will be running frequent uh, tumor studies and that you will have frequent need for a certain amount of miles of this model, uh, you know, we'll be happy to work with you to set up a custom breed breeding project of this line um, that would be able to supply your needs. Great, thank you. Our next question asks, can I find the peer-reviewed articles utilizing the BNDG mouse model on the Indigo website? Yes, so you can find these um, on two different, in two different places on the website. So if you go to the Indigo website and search for the BNDG model, um, if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, uh, there will be linked that will take you uh, to the peer-reviewed uh, article based on different research topics. Uh, you can also go to the technical resources and request to download the BNDG white paper, uh, and there will be uh, references listed within this white paper as well. Great, thank you for that detailed answer. Our next question is a little bit longer, and it says, you mentioned that your PDX models inoculated with single-cell suspension. Does that mean your patient samples were cultured in vitro before inoculation? It does not maintain the 3D structure or heterogeneity of the original status, right? Um, so a couple of portions to that question. So when the model was uh, first, or the tumor tissue was first grafted from the patient, it was taken from the patient and you know, dissociated into tumor fragments, which were later inoculated into the mouse uh, for the first round of propagations. Uh, in subsequent propagations, we take um, the tumor uh, that, uh, from the mouse and we dissociate it um, using the metanol dissociation kit and then freeze down uh, the tumors. And that's what we utilize for the tumor studies. But no, these, uh, these tumors, these tumor cells never see um, the in vitro culture conditions. They go, you know, from um, the patient to mouse or from mouse to mouse with that interve intervening dissociation step. Wonderful, thank you. And it looks like we have time for one more question here. And this one asks, do you see a difference in tumor take rate between the NSG and the BNDG mice? Uh, so we have limited data on this, uh, you know, based on the four PDX models that we ran in in house, and based on those studies, no, we do not see any great differences in um, the take rate between both of these ultra immunodeficient um, mouse models. Wonderful. Well, thank you again, Victoria, for your time today and your important research. We would also like to thank LabRoots and our sponsor, Invigo, for underwriting today's educational webcast. Before we go, I'd like to thank the audience for joining us today and for their interesting questions. Questions we do not have time for today and those submitted during the on-demand period will be addressed by the speaker via the contact information you provided at the time of registration. This webcast can be viewed on demand 
and LabRoots will alert you via email when it's available for replay. We encourage you to share that email with your colleagues who may have missed today's live event. Until next time, goodbye.